Let's start with yield curve. A yield curve is a line that plots yields of bonds having equal credit quality but differing maturity dates. The slope of the yield curve gives an idea of future interest rate changes and economic activity. So this means the yield curve is a graphical representation of the interest rates on date for a range of maturities. There are three main types of yield curve shapes, normal yield curve, inverted yield curve, flat yield curve. But in this video, I'll also be explaining about steep yield curve and a humped yield curve. Let's know how a yield curve works. The yield curve is used as a benchmark for other date in the market such as mortgage rates or bank lending rates and it is used to predict changes in economic output and growth. The most frequently reported yield curve compares 3 to 30 year period treasury date. Yield curve rates are usually available at the treasury's interest rate websites by 6 pm each trading day. Traditionally, the yield curve is displayed on a line chart with the x-axis representing the interest rate and the y-axis representing the maturity date. Have a look at the graph. The graph displays a bond's yield on the vertical axis and the time to maturity across the horizontal axis. The most common shape of yield curve is upward sloping, meaning the lower term debt has lower interest rate than longer term debt why is that i will tell you later on in this video but there are some other different types of yield curve shapes which will also cover up in the in this video now let's see the types of yield curves the first one is normal yield curve what is a normal yield curve the most common yield curve is normal or upward sloping. You can see this in the graph. It indicates lower treasuries like 3 month and 2 year debt has a lower interest rate than 10 year and 30 year date. It makes sense because if you are loaning out money for a longer term, you expect to earn more interest on the date. During times of a no normal yield curve, there is the expectation of a decline in inflation. So let's understand what we have read so far. So the normal yield curve reflects higher interest rate for, for say 30 year bonds as opposed to 10 year bonds. So if you think about it intuitively, if you, if you are lending your money for a longer period of time, you expect to earn a higher compensation for that, isn't it? Let's read further. When yields make the curve, the economy is typically in an expansion mode, according to the Corporate Finance Institute. But investors should exercise caution as the longer the curve remains normal, the greater the probability it will change. So let's try to understand what we have read so far. The positively sloped yield curve is called normal because a rational market will generally want more compensation for greater risk. Right. Thus, as long-term securities are exposed to greater risk, the yield on such securities will be greater than that offered for lower risk short-term securities. A longer period of time increases the probability of unexpected negative events taking place. Therefore, a long-term maturity will typically offer higher interest rate and have higher volatility. Let's move on to inverted yield curve. An inverted curve appears when long-term yields fall below short-term yields. An inverted yield curve occurs due to the perception of long-term investors that interest rates will decline in the future. This can happen for a number of reasons. But one of the main reasons is the expectation of a decline in inflation. When the yield curve starts to shift towards an inverted shape, it is perceived as a leading indicator of an economic downturn. 
Such interest rate changes have historically reflected the market sentiment and expectations of the economy. So this means that when investors expect longer maturity bond yields to become even lower in the future, many would purchase longer maturity bonds to lock in yields before they decrease further. So why this yield curve is downward sloping? The reason is that the increasing onset of demand for longer maturity bonds and the lack of demand for shorter maturity bonds led to higher prices but lower yields no longer maturity bonds sorry uh, let me repeat it again like the increasing onset of demand for longer maturity bonds and the lack of demand for shorter maturity bonds securities lead to higher prices but lower yield on longer maturity bonds and the lower prices but higher yields on shorter maturity bonds further inverting a down sloped yield curve let's see what is a flat yield curve a flat yield curve may arise from normal or inverted yield curve depending on changing economic conditions when the economy is transitioning from expansion to slower development and even recession yields on longer maturity bonds tend to fall and yields on shorter term securities likely rise inverting a normal yield curve into a flat yield curve when the economy is transitioning from recession to recovery and potential expansion yields on longer maturity bonds are set to rise and yields on shorter maturity securities are sure to fall causing an inverted yield curve towards a flat yield curve so when a, fa a flat yield curve happens it happens when all maturities have similar yields. This means that the yield of a 10-year bond is essentially the same as that of a 30-year bond. A flattening of the yield curve usually occurs when there is a transition between the normal yield curve and the inverted yield curve. Let's move on to steep yield curve. There have been instances where long-term yields rise at a more rapid pace than short-term yields. This creates a steep yield curve. Market conditions are basically the same for the steep yield curve as they are for the normal. The exception is the steep yield curve indicates a wider gap between short and long-term yield expectations. Typically, a steep yield curve indicates quick economic expansion in, on the horizon. So the important point here is that both the normal and steep yield curves are based on the same general market conditions. The only difference is that a steeper curve reflects a larger difference between short-term and long-term return expectations. Let's move on to humped yield curve. I don't know I'm pronouncing it correctly or not. Let's say humped yield curve. So what is a humped yield curve? Perhaps the rarest of yield curves is the humped yield curve. This basically occurs when mid-term yields are higher than both short-term and long-term ones. When yields are in a humped curve, the expectation is for an economic growth slowdown. But again, the humped yield curve is rare. It can indicate potential market volatility due to a change in economic policies. Let's see the influ influencing factors of yield curve. First one is inflation. Central banks tend to respond to a rise in expected inflation with an increase in interest rates. A rise in inflation leads to a decrease in purchasing power and therefore investors expect an increase in the short term interest rate. So what is an inflation? Inflation is when the price level of an economy increases the purchasing power of that economy decreases. Suppose a product, some product price increases in a country. So people of that country will not be able to buy those products. So the buyer will decrease. The purchasing power of the people will decrease due to the increase of those products. 
sorry increasing prices of those products the second one is economic growth strong economic growth may lead to an increase in inflation due to a rise in aggregate uh, demand strong economic growth also means that there is a competition for capital with more options to invest available for investors thus strong economic growth leads to an increase in yields and a steeper curve interest rate is the third one if the central bank raises the interest rate on treasuries this in this increase will result in higher demand for treasuries and thus eventually lead to a decrease in interest rates so if the central bank decides to raise the interest rate on treasuries so you're getting more interest if you buy the bonds so you will rush to buy and like you uh, many people will rush to buy because they're expecting to get a higher interest rate so this will increase the higher demand for treasuries and ultimately uh, it will lead to decrease in interest rates because then central bank will lower the interest rate on treasuries the central bank will have to do that because to uh, you know make a balance in the economy let's see the importance of the l curve forecasting interest rates so the shape of the curve helps investors to get a sense of the likely future course of interest rates a nominal upward normal upward sloping curve means that long-term securities have a higher yield whereas inverted curve shows short-term securities have a higher yield so depending on the yield curves you can forecast the interest rate and you can take your decision okay second one is financial intermediary banks and other financial intermediaries borrow most of their funds by selling short-term deposits and lend by using long-term loans the steeper the upward sloping curve is the wider the difference between lending and borrowing rates and the higher is their profit a flat or downward sloping curve on the other hand typically translates to a decrease in the profit of financial intermediaries the third one is the trade-off between maturity and yield the yield curve helps indicate the trade-off between maturity and yield if the yield curve is upward sloping then to increase his yield the investor must invest in longer term securities which will mean more risk so why more risk we have discussed it in our first point which is normal yield curve if you go back you can you can see that i have explained it there i'm telling you again like if uh, the longer the, the longer the curve remains normal the greater the probability it will change so there is always a risk factor the last one is overpriced or underpriced securities the curve can indicate for investors whether a security is temporarily overpriced or underpriced if a security's rate of uh, return lies above the yield curve this indicates that the security is underpriced if the rate of return lies below the yield curve then it means that uh, the uh, security is overpriced so how how it will help you knowing that the security is overpriced or underpriced if the security is overpriced you can assume that it will it will go down to its normal price or even it can go below its normal price so you will not buy that security right but if you if you see if, if you can assume that the security is underpriced so uh, sooner or later it is going to rise to its normal price or accurate price or even it can go higher and become overpriced so there is a lot of opportunities to make profit right if the security is underpriced you're gonna uh, rush to buy that security so if you have got the security and you can assume that it's overpriced so it's gonna the price gonna fall right so you're gonna rush to sell your security immediately and if you see that uh, the security in the market is underpriced so it's gonna uh, rise the price gonna rise right so you, if you if you haven't got the security you're gonna rush to buy the security and if you have got the security you're not going to sell it you're waiting for future to 
increase the price then uh, you're gonna sell the security that's it so thank you very much guys if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section and if you have liked this video then please hit the like button and please subscribe my channel it will help me and inspire me to make more videos and if i if i'm able to make you understand the topic then please comment it so thank you very much guys